still works. I remember like it was yesterday. I know, but it's been almost two weeks. Hey, it's Chris Nichols here from the camera store. Hey, I'm Jordan from the camera store. And uh, by now you've all seen our video, Battle at Offstop Ridge, and uh, thanks to your support out there, it's become huge. It's and uh, yeah, we never thought it would get this big and it's uh, been fantastic. And a lot of people wondering, you know, what did we do to make this? How did it become such a success? How did we shoot it? I'm getting a lot of questions about Absolutely. that. Absolutely. So we thought we would take you guys behind the scenes, a little bit of a documentary. So uh, come along with us. Let's take a look at what we did and how we made this film and uh, enjoy the ride. So the idea has been around for a while. Yeah, we were, we were doing our usual thing where we're supposed to be working at the store, but instead <laughs> we're talking about movies and ideas and what we can do. And yeah, it, uh, yeah. yeah. And, and I kind of pitched it. And yeah. it was just such an, a lot of people you'd explain like, oh, we're going to go do like a photo shoot as a war scene. And it, yeah. it, it doesn't, people didn't really know what you were talking about. It was one of those things where it was like eventually, okay, just trust me, we'll go shoot it. I mean, we, I remember we were talking about like, you know, we could shoot it in the store. We were kind of thinking about the logistics of that, but then, you know, maybe no, we should do it outside, like yeah. a war film and get out there. And uh, I know right off the start, we came up with ideas like doing the uh, X-10 rig that Brent had with the yeah. big lens and... Uh, uh, the flash grenade was one we had really early. Absolutely, you know, but then, you know, everybody sort of got together and uh, we got Started people to throwing their own ideas out. Yeah. And uh, yeah, once they got the idea for it, I think everybody got a little more excited, but it was a long time before... You know, you know, we you actually know. got to shoot the yeah. movie at. Which is also why we didn't tell management about it. Yeah, we just stole, we basically <laughs> just stole like all the gear we could find in the store without telling them. And uh, <laughs> yeah. I'm surprised so many people showed up. I mean, albeit four or five hours late. Yeah. Uh, we won't name names. But uh, yeah, it was good. You know, they, uh, they came out and we got a good uh, collaboration of ideas. Everybody pitched in, even though yeah. it was a pretty long shoot. You know, it, it was, was like yeah. seven hours, six I, hours. No, it was, a, it was a four hour shoot, actually. It was pretty quick. I remember it being seven hours. Okay, it was it a slow felt, shoot. It felt like seven hours. <laughs> So Jordan, here's Fish Creek, uh, the river that we shot at, and it's uh, a lot higher than it was. Yeah. Holy cow. Well, we kind of came here for a couple of reasons. It's really quiet. Um, I loved getting all of the like strewn around branches and stuff like that made it look like yeah. a bit more of a battlefield. Absolutely. Um, and then we really oh. lucked out. Well, there's that bag of dog poop yeah. that we shot next to the whole time. Yeah, that Stop. we were dodging the entire time. Uh, what really worked out well is we were right beside a campfire, so we got a nice little bit of smoke and yeah, haze. Yeah, we got that, that smoke. Just kinda, we lucked out that and way. And you can see it on that opening shot with Sean and myself. I mean, yeah. it gets that hazy it's background. That, yeah, no, we really, really good. lucked out with the uh, lighting. It was overcast, yeah. and that worked out really well, too. It was a pretty easy shooting day. Yeah. And there's some stuff that didn't even wind up in the finished product. Like, yeah. uh, like Dave Paul built this amazing rig with a uh, Profoto D1 attached to a 1D Mark IV. So yeah. it was a studio strobe with a regular camera on sort it. Sort of like a heavy weapon, and as then, it were. And then somebody who will not be named, <laughs> who looks exactly like Paul Schaefer, yeah. forgot, to bring, um, <laughs> forgot to bring a battery pack for that. Absolutely. So that didn't wind up being yeah. used. Yeah. Um, so, you know, despite despite that person whose last name is a, a, a famous uh, and precious metal, um, <laughs> We still got a really, really good shoot out of that. We, hey. we did, yeah. yeah. Even him just running with the, an on-camera flash set to strobe turned out really well. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, the X-10 rig got a lot of press on uh, online. Oh, I mean, it's visually fantastic, thing. yeah. Uh, I mean, Brent with the sunglasses and the gloves, too, was a stroke of genius. Yeah, he so. basically looks like a, a slightly overweight Dolph Lundgren, that's which why, is fantastic. That's why yeah. I'm afraid of Sammy. Because <laughs> they're obviously going to be like... It. Yeah, yeah, he's like, he seems yeah, like yeah, a nice, polite guy, we, but then in his natural... You know, we state. had our cultural stereotype, it worked out he, perfect. He's like yeah. a giant South African Duke Nukem. <laughs> <laughs> From a technical side point, you know, we should talk about the gear that we used. Uh, yeah, there were a couple cameras in it for a few reasons. I love the look of the SLRs, so I wanted to shoot it primarily with 5D Mark II. Right, and we've been actually switching I'm, over the 5D Mark II uh, lately. For yeah, we, we used to shoot a lot with conventional video cameras like that HM100 down like that there. that one there, yeah. Um, but lately we've been shooting a lot more with the SLRs, but there were a couple problems with that. The first mm. big one is we wanted flashes firing. Yeah, right, of course. And if you fire a flash on a CMOS sensor, you just get this white band or this box and it looks off. Because of that rolling shutter, absolutely. Exactly. Uh, so we had to bring uh, the big JVC HM700, which has a CCD sensor. And, and we used version. that to shoot anything with a flash, but also it was really nice because it has in-camera overcranking. So we could shoot our slow-mo sequences, make sure they looked good when we played Absolutely. them back in slow-mo. Um, so that gave us a couple extra options for it. 
But uh, I do definitely prefer working with the SLRs. That whole intro well, is with them. I mean, yeah. I mean, you shot this at 24 frames per second to kind of give it more cinematic look. More cinematic and then look. that large SLR sensor, again, really gives it that cinematic feel. Right? Yeah, the, exactly. The feel like a movie camera. Yeah. yeah and I, I think it came through well. What's video. cool, too, is the whole opening before the bullets start flying, it's all shot locked down on a tripod or a slider. It's really solid. Yeah. Uh, and then at the second you push the shutter, we do two things. We take it off, we shoot the whole thing handheld, but then as well, we crank up the shutter speed, so we got that jerky Saving Private Ryan. Which power. we never do, because we, we always I hate, we hate, fast shutter speed. hate the fast shutter speed, but it's, yeah. It's funny, I hate action movies, and I'm just like, I don't want to sit there and watch some handheld jerky cam with a fast shutter speed for two hours, and then I wind up doing that once, and it's my most popular video <laughs> by far. <laughs> So when it came to the sound, we uh, recorded so much of that just in the store separately, right? I mean, it yep. sounded like you're out there, and we got really, really awesome sounds, yep. collecting a lot of old cameras, like trying all the different SLRs, seeing yep. what they sounded like. Yeah, exactly. And some of them are adjusted, too. Like, some of those cameras are pitched down or slowed down. Right. We did all kinds of stuff with that. But we didn't really use much of the location sound. I thought no. we'd wind up using a lot more of it. Even, like, the sound of the birds and stuff was all fully. The other thing that we've he heard a lot of is everyone is saying, why didn't you use a score? Why didn't you use a score? I know, you know? yeah, yeah. Um, and the whole idea was I wanted that intensity that, you know, a score makes things kind of artificial, like you're watching a movie. I think we still stand behind the decision that the soundtrack was not good for this But just for the hell of it, movie. I went and stuck a little score underneath it. Yeah, yeah, you guys can see at home uh, what this sounds like, and uh, you judge it for yourself if you think this is better. Yeah, that's terrible, huh? <laughs> it's really bad. I don't know. It's kind of, you know, it's upbeat. I, it changes I, I the like mood the original. It. it was so sad the first one. Yeah, that's true. It kind of gives it a little bit more. Yeah, a little <laughs> levity. Light, light in the loafers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so besides yourself, of course, who would you say were the outstanding achievers? I didn't really notice anybody else in the video other than me. Was there somebody else in the... There were a couple other people. Oh, like, well, Sean, yeah. Sean, Sean is there, with Sean, Sean is there starting the whole battle with me, right. and uh, he's there with Peter Gold, too, with the grenade, and Sean uh, really gave us our hipster content, right. and a huge Which portion a of our comments on <laughs> how we're a bunch of hipsters out in the woods uh, I think they're directly uh, attributed to Sean. I know, uh, completely attributed to Sean and his hair. Other one, Dave Paul, you know, one of my favorite scenes in the video is where Dave Paul rushes out of the trenches shooting his yeah. uh, his cannon flash gun. And, but but uh, that's, that wasn't originally what we planned at all. No, it's, he, it's great, but I mean, you had to, it was funny because you had to mirror flip it, and oh, that yeah. turned the 5D into a left-handed camera, the only one ever in existence. Yeah. But I love that Dave's running, and he can't even keep it together. He's cracking no, up, he's and he actually lifts the camera to hide his smile. <laughs> it was fantastic. <laughs> Well, that's, I'd say the vast majority of our bad takes are because people just could not keep a straight face. Oh, it was face. Good. Yeah, well, it was fun. It was with a fun one shoot. exception. Peter Gold came in, and he took that seriously. Yeah, he was, he worried me. It was like, <laughs> yeah, it was scary. It there, was... there was a darkness in his eyes. <laughs> he went to places while he, yeah. he was doing that. <laughs> and, um... Lemmer, of course, he was our quiet... Well, I, the uh, thing I like is I didn't really direct him. I was yeah. just like, come up and over the hill here. I was a terrible director in that sequence. No, he and he, he brought his own thing because he comes up terrified. You can see the fear in his eyes. And oh, I yeah, didn't tell no, him to do great. that. That was, was his great. own decision. It was like he was being hunted. I think a lot of our staff have been in combat before. It's, uh, <laughs> it's a little scary. It was. So we're famous now. Yeah, yeah, it's exploded pretty big, and uh, we've been on the news, we've been yeah. in the papers, yeah. lots of interviews. Yeah, recognized on the street. Recognized on the street, yeah, and uh, you know, it's been great, because really the thanks goes to a lot of our customers, a lot of our viewers, and then just internationally, people picking it up and saying, we loved it, we had yeah. so much fun, we shared it with our friends, and yeah, it's been great. Yeah, a lot of people, were, they'd watch it and they'd share it, that was the one thing we, we are constantly heard. We are so appreciative of like everybody just getting on board, having a good time, and sharing it out there, it's been excellent. So because of that, we're going to make amazing movies like yeah. the one that you are watching right now yeah. as a result. Of yeah. You know. yeah, we're going to, I mean, it's going to go <laughs> down. values are through the roof It's going to go down for a bit, and then hopefully we'll make another one. I mean, you know, it wasn't just luck. We can pour these out every oh, time yeah. we want now, right? So, yeah, yeah and <laughs> that wasn't a fluke. <laughs> but we do have some good plans coming up. Yeah. and uh, So keep an eye on the channel. Absolutely.
So I'm here with one of my favorite local filmmakers, Chad Tweeden. Adrian. Uh, hey, Chad. <laughs> who's nice enough to come out and uh, give us a hand shooting this uh, so I could actually get out in front of the camera for a little bit. Um, and Photon sent us this new rig to test out. This is the Photon Neon camera support. <laughs> Uh, what did you think of it? I think it's great, man. It's really easy to use, lightweight, very adjustable. Mm -hmm. It's got this extra little sort of mount here, so you can mount a mic or you know a, a light or maybe a monitor. Right. Yeah. No, it's Just great. Give you some extra. Now it's different from a regular camera rig um, because it's not you can't expand it, add a bunch of different components to it. Mm -hmm. This is solely for support, right? Mm -hmm. But I mean, it's built very sturdy, and it'd be great for some sort of documentary kind of purpose. Right. Absolutely. Well, and it's nice for comfort too because you can just let go of it. You're not supporting the camera with your arm yeah, the whole time like a regular I mean, yeah, you know, you're going to kind of bring this up like this, but yeah, that's very comfortable and it's, it doesn't take too much strain on your back. It's great. Nice. Yeah, it's great. 